This is Pico CTF 2025. We are going to solve the challenge SSTI 1 in web exploitation. And I'm guessing SSTI comes from server side template inclusion. I made a cool website where you can announce whatever you want. Try it out. Additional details will be available after launching your challenge instance. Okay, so let's launch the instance. Check out my website here. Okay. Uh, what do we want to announce? I don't know. Let's say test. Okay. Let's try something. Uh-huh. Whatever we put in here is getting parsed server-side basically as a server-side include. Now, in order to properly exploit this, we need to figure out what server is running. So I have this little tool that's called template injection table that was made exactly for this. And so basically the way this works is if you look in the column up here, uh, these are called polyglots, right? And so there are patterns you are supposed to copy and then paste into the form. And based on the output, you fill in the blanks here. Okay, so I want to get rid of the error ones and I want to keep just the non-error ones. Generally, it's recommended to start with the uh, non-error ones. And if you're unable to narrow down the language and the template engine is, then enable the error ones. Let's get started. So we're gonna copy the first one. We are going to paste it here. And we're gonna look at the output, right? So P dollar, okay, let's see. I believe it's this one. Now we're going to move on the second one and basically continue the process until it has narrowed it down to one server side include. And then we can work our way from there, exploiting that particular engine. Okay. Is it unmodified? So now this one. Error. Okay. We're getting an error here and um as we are completing it you notice the list is much smaller now right based on the outputs we've provided so far okay single curly braces that's it even smaller we are narrowing it down uh, let's see here and obviously you can't probably automate this, but it's so fast it doesn't really bother me to do it by hand. And so here is this one, I believe. Let's look what's different here to help narrow down. Because you see, all these polyglots are identical between the engines that we've narrowed it down. And so this one is going to make the difference, right? Okay, true. There we go. It's narrowed it down to two of them. Jinja2 and Jinja2 Sandbox with Python. Perfect. Okay, now that we know what uh, template engine is running, we can start thinking about a potential exploit, right? And so let me make this one bigger so that you can uh, see more clearly. Let's see what's available, right? And as you can see, this is very, very hard to uh, read. So now we can tell uh, this is the only one available for us. We're going to advance our building like so. And let's see what we get here. Now we get the context and classes we can use 
What I'm trying to accomplish here is basically a way to access more. And so let's take joiner, for example. So let's do dot joiner. Does it work? Perfect. We got the class. And now what we can do with this class is a little trick here. And we can init and globals, right? And so now we get the global context using that class uh, to piggyback off of. Again, let's paste it here. Woo, that's a lot of info and it's all comma delimited. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop it here uh, and split to make it easier to read. And now I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it here. And now it's much more readable, right? And so now by building step by step, we've gained access to all of these uh, functions and libraries that we can use to further our exploitation of that server. Okay. And so let's see, let's look at something interesting. Generally, I would like to get something like an OS dot something to read. Do we have the OS here? Is it available? There we go. Okay. So Python OS module will allow us to run commands on the shell. So we have globals so far. Let's do dot OS. And I don't know. Let's see if we are allowed to run a P open, which is basically it's going to invoke the um, a shell, run the list command in the shell, and then read the output and send it back to us, hopefully. There we go. Okay. So all of this, all of these are files in our current folder. So we have pycache, app.py, flag, and requirements. Well, my guess is that if we are going to uh, read the flag, we're going to get what we need. And so there we go. That's the flag. Let's put it over in the challenge. And there we have it. Challenge completed. If you've liked it, hit that like button. If you'd like to get notified whenever I solve more challenges, hit that subscribe button. In any case, I will see you on the next challenge. Bye-bye.